Hey, y'all. We are so excited you've joined us today for our Christmassy season finale. So get your hot cocoa or your peppermint mocha. Sit back at the table with us while we talk all things Christmas. I'm Lainey. And I'm Laura Beth. And we are Steel Magnolias. The strength of steel with the grace of a magnolia. We are here to have uplifting conversations about life in the South. And we've got plenty of room at our table. So pull up a chair. Merry Christmas, sis. Merry Christmas. We are here at our season four season finale to talk about what wonderful things are happening around the most wonderful time of the year Christmas it really is the most wonderful time of the year I um I laugh because you know we all want our um homes and hearts to look a certain way at Christmas time Uh and as we're sitting here I'm watching like three ladybugs crawl on the ceiling because they all try to come into this old house yes. when it gets cold yes and my Christmas tree fell over um <laughs> day before yesterday because the, the stand broke no but there was a piece of the stand that broke and so it was just totally leaning I had to prop it up with two chairs until I could get a new stand and with that like it was already decorated and everything right. oh, when yes. this happened so now um the top 25 percent of the tree has no lights because everything kind of like went down <laughs> and I'm not taking all that stuff off it's it's just beautifully decorated it looks wonderful well you I had not- to remove some things around but I'm not taking lights off so no It's just now kind of makes me laugh when I look at it and there's no lights on the top, but that's okay. I didn't even (laughs) notice there weren't lights on the top because there's so many other things that are beautiful around So all of that to say, it is the most wonderful time of the year, but we can keep our gaze on what's frustrating and what's going wrong, or we can try to keep our gaze on what's right and what's already, the gifts that have already come. That's right. Well, what would you say... Is like a fill in the blank to this statement. It's not Christmas until fill in the blank. I'm going to say the house is decorated and it smells like cedar and pine. Ooh, yes. And you make it smell like cedar and pine because you get a real tree and you usually get live greenery. I do. Do you put other things on the stovetop? or not like to make that smell there is a candle i love i didn't get it this year um oh. but it's called holiday by nest nest candle it's my favorite wow it's a it's, it's yeah it's a it's a wonderful holiday candle mm-hmm. um Let's I was kind of hoping somebody might give me one because okay, that's how I found it. A client gave me that for Christmas one year, and then I was hooked. I'm like, this is the best candle ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and it lasts quite a while. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Because it burns slow. It burns nice, also and slow, quality and candle. It's just so wonderful. Um, and there's other ones that are similar. That Time brand they make yes. Fraser fur that's really good. Um. I don't know. There's different ones. Yeah. But that. Um, so that's when it's Christmas. Yeah. To you. That's fun. I wish my answer was more spiritual. Mine than is. That. Mine's more of spiritual. <laughs> well, I mean, I <laughs> I just honestly answered the question with the fill in the blank. I wish mine was more spiritual. I had that. more time to think about it, though, than you did. Uh, I, I think it's when I start my Advent study that mm. I've been into for the last several years. So Advent being the beginning, the four Sunday before Christmas. So this year it was the Sunday right after Thanksgiving. Right. And goes all the way up until Christmas. And, it you know, Advent meaning like arrival or coming. And, of course, it just reminds me that there was a time when the earth was waiting for the first coming of Christ. The first, yes, that first manger. I mean, that first encounter with the baby, Jesus. Um, 
But yeah, and then now just going, well, now we're like in a second in the in between. Advent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're wait- we've got a second Advent we're waiting on. So we're kind of in between those two Advents. And this was fun. For the first time ever, I believe, for a live experience, I got to see Amy Grant live at a Christmas tree lighting over at Lipscomb University. You went this year? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I've never seen her like do a concert live. Yeah, I haven't either. I've been a fan of her music for, you know, since, since the we, 90s. Since we all were, really. <laughs> if you know that name, then you were probably a fan back when I was. And she sang Tender Tennessee Christmas. And you've got a pillow right here beside us that says the only Christmas for me with the state of Tennessee in I mean that song. a precious plaid. But yeah, it really was sort of surreal because I was, she even said, we're doing Christmas shows in all these cities. And this is the only place, you know, Nashville, I have like one other stop, I think she said in the state of Tennessee. She's like, it doesn't really resonate for everybody like it does here. Yes. So it, you know, it's a known song. Yes. But, and of course, I'm talking about Tender Tennessee Christmas. But yeah, it was just, you know. Well, really I have fun. seen Michael W. Smith in concert two or three times probably at yes. Christmas. And he is a fabulous Christmas show. Yes, like, he is. He's just got Christmas all over him. He does. If he's And he's touring. So, with some dates with her. Some I dates. know. But I, since I've never seen her, I thought, dang it, I should have made that happen. Yeah. I think she played. they played Memphis. And that would have been a really fun trip mm-hmm. to make. Mm-hmm. Well, she does this annual tree lighting at Lipscomb. Every year they've been doing it for eighteen years. And, and does she? And she? How many one. songs did she do? Like three, two or three? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's mostly the Lipscomb for sure. University Choir, yeah, to really showcase some of their students. So okay, I'm totally jumping, but I want to make sure I say this. You know how Nashville does the big New Year's Eve shindig downtown, yeah, yeah. and it's usually some pretty well known country artists, yeah, for free, for free. Guess who's on the bill this year in addition to the country fisk jubilee singers are you serious yes i was so happy to see that cool i know so we've that's awesome um, mentioned them on the podcast before so not just mentioned them we sat down with their director who just passed away Mm -hmm. and yeah he's wonderful Okay, so we did sit down and think about what are some categorical Christmas themes that would be fun to chat about. Yeah. So we just kind of have some really quick answers. Now I'm looking at you and I'm like, I bet it's not going to be quick. But. <laughs> okay. So none. I'm not straightforward on anything when we play um, that game, Apples to Apples, that I love to play, by the way. My answers are always complicated on why I picked what I picked and all of that. But Required anyway. like an explanation. Okay, but we did in advance think about these. So what is your favorite Christmas food? Okay. I do have two different ones. Okay, I do too. Okay. I do too. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there's lots of nostalgia around food. The whole, so, the whole season has nostalgia, it right? It does. Yeah. And so it's, it is hard to just pick a yeah. couple of things. But I do an annual gathering with three of my college friends where we always have appetizers the yes. first night. And I always look forward to that. Yes. you know, everybody kind of pitches in mm-hmm. and makes a couple of things. And it's always delicious. And appetizers are my favorite food because I like a little of this, a little of that instead of a plate full of yes. the same. Yes. I think that's a f- strong female thing like i have talked to so many women before that say if i could do a cheese and cracker night once a week or just like do my own little Uh, your own personal charcuterie charcuterie board Mm -hmm. that that would be so fun and i would be so content and so full and i just i love proteins so having a little meat and cheese yeah i don't really yeah it's my favorite yeah so i love that so not even any particular appetizer that every that somebody brings or that you always make just appetizers um, it does in general. Very somewhat year to year. One of my favorite things is when Leslie's husband makes us a smoked salmon because he oh, does it so yes. well. He used to work for Houston's and he makes it like Houston's. Um, so when she brings that with this homemade dill sauce, man, it's ridiculous. So that feels so special. It does. 
So that's one I look forward to. Um, but I just even like the simple little cheese balls and mm-hmm. meatballs, mm-hmm. all those kinds mm-hmm. of silly yeah. little things. But it's also, um, I think, just fun to be with those women. And so, yeah, it's that's yeah. part of it is yeah. not just the actual food, but right. who you're sitting around the table with. For sure. So. Okay, so appetizers was your and first one. And then I love our Christmas Eve tradition. We do a seafood feast. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, that's another. So you picked whole categories. You're so funny. Like you picked appetizers oh. and seafood. I I really thought you were going to be like the blah 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 mm-hmm. Christmas cookie or <laughs> no. It's Okay, well then I'm going to keep one of mine really broad. I will say Christmas cookies is a um favorite. Favorite, but I I think I'm really thinking more specifically like iced Christmas like you're thinking out- of Ellie Nolan's cream cheese cookies. For sure, but even like a cutout cookie that's iced. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, just a little stocking or yes. like a little, okay. I think that is so fun. And then the other thing, which this would fall into your appetizers um, sort of category, was I like baked brie oh, girl. with Come like on. fig, you know, part of it or cranberry mm-hmm. or both. Mm-hmm. That I'm gonna make warm that consistency. With some crackers is Christmas, and I just and it's even pretty with the cranberries. Or yes, whatever it's colorful, got like the pretty look. And yes, it's warm yeah. and delicious. Little rosemary garnishes around it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had some right now. Okay, favorite Christmas drink. Well, it could be alcoholic or non-alcoholic. I'm not sure which route I you mean, went. I went hot cranberry drink that our mom makes it's like so nostalgic and just so warming literally Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of your heart and body yes we've mentioned it on this podcast before we'll post a link originated from patty whitehurst yes and it is so delicious and just makes me want to go christmas caroling (laughs) (laughs) if it's in my hand i want to go outside and sing it does make good for outside activities whether you're standing on the roadside at the Christmas parade or decorating outside. Yeah. And the other beautiful thing is it's done in a percolator. Yes. And so the whole house smells like Christmas. Yes. So there's that. Yeah. Cloves, cinnamon, yeah. all the wonderful spices. Well, that's what I put down too. So, all right. Favorite Christmas song. I don't have an easy answer. <laughs> Do I go? <laughs> Do I go spiritual? Like what moves my heart? And makes me weep in that way? Or do I go fun, festive, put this on when I'm decorating the tree? Okay, you can get... Because both are important. Yes, they both are. Okay. You can have both. The spiritual song that moves me the most is a female voice singing Oh Holy Night. Amen. Give me Faith Hill or somebody like that. Yes. Singing... Yes. Full force, fall on your knees. I'm yes. just, it makes me want to fall on my knees. Yes. I love that song so much. But, you know, when I'm decorating the tree or um, baking or something, how fun to have on, like, the old school Andy Williams. Yes. Bing Crosby, Dean yes. Martin kind of sound. The crooners, I think. Is yes. kind of, yeah. 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 I would, I, I even, I don't even sometimes require vocalists sometimes i just like christmas jazz you know but yes all those old school voices peanuts christmas soundtrack is really fun too that's so fun well i put oh holy night as well and i mean it's funny because really the first verse and chorus is mostly what gets sung because i was just curious about some of the lyrics and i didn't print them out to read them but Verse two, if you're interested, look it up. It never gets sung. It's so interesting. Sometimes verse three does, but yeah, that line where it talks about um, where the soul soul felt its worth. Felt its worth. Oh my gosh. That is so moving. That's going to make me into tears right now. I mean, that's what Christmas is all about. That's why when you said it's not Christmas until, I wish my answer had been my heart skips a beat as I listen to Holy Night. Because that (laughs) really is what Christmas is all about. Not the cedar smells. (laughs) Well, it all works together, though, I think. It does. 
And I have always been partial to Carol of the Bells. You have. And I'll tell you what it is. I, I finally figured it out. It took me a long time. I was like, why do I like this so much? Because I honestly like any version, which is very unusual if you like a song. Like it in, can be kids, in terms of it, it being be adults, a, your it favorite. Be, yeah. It can be Trans-Siberian Orchestra, like the real intensity yeah, of it. Yeah. What I love about it, and I just figured this out, is the haste that I can feel <gasps> okay. in the song. Uh-huh. And I... I equate it to the haste of Mary and Joseph. Hmm. Like, I don't know how long she was literally contracting on a donkey to giving birth in a manger. But I just imagine that there was that that soundtrack just runs through Mm -hmm. my head. And I think they even used that song in that movie, The Nativity Story. Which is so fabulous, by the way. Let's just talk about that. Yeah. I am hoping to see that this year. Yeah. Um, Because I think it does such a good job of truly telling the story. It feels very culturally accurate. Yeah. They it's look Jewish. 2005 for anyone that's not is familiar it that with old? it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It feels very Middle Eastern. Mm-hmm. This is what the culture was. This is what the people looked like, mm-hmm. what the atmosphere was. The yeah. Joseph is, I mean, I just had a whole new love of Joseph mm-hmm. in from that movie. Mm-hmm. I know. I remember there's a line where he's, before she's even given birth, but he is aware now that she's having the son of God because he's had an angelic his own dream angelic. of his own. Uh-huh. He says to Mary... I just think about, will I even be able to teach him anything? Will I any have anything to teach him? Like, that's what he's thinking about. Like, what? How, I'm, how am I supposed to be his dad? It was so human of him. I loved it. And the fact that, well, we could go into all the theology of, but the, the fact that God came in the flesh and dwelt amongst us and mm. had the limitations that we have, that had the... um felt the pains that we feel, the rejection, the all of the things. Like, that is so unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is. It's very um, strangely comforting to me when I'm going through something hard. Yeah. Like, Buddha can't say he did that. Right. And He doesn't remember. Vishnu, Vishnu yeah. can't say any of, like, only Jesus can actually say yeah I do know what that feels like yeah I remember that yeah I remember that feeling yeah whoo that's a biggie also just before we leave the songs and dive deeper into movies I wanted to mention because a dear friend of ours that has spent so much time in Ukraine she mentioned this recently Carol of the Bells originated in Ukraine it sure did and so and it was a just music at first mm-hmm. the yeah. words were added yeah. later there and was just a big story on ABC about that. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Okay, um, I didn't see that. Yeah. I'll have to look that up. But yeah, their nation being so torn apart from war, it just uh, has a different meaning too. It really this Christmas. does. Christmas. And that, that's, you know, I actually was pondering Ukraine um, just in the last couple of days and thinking about even how I was going to answer these questions Mm -hmm. because I thought you know Christmas still brings the hope whether you have any Christmas tree whether you have any cedar smells it's true whether you have any electricity yeah there is a lot of the country that's not had consistent electricity yeah and um it's cold there yeah (laughs) it's so cold there and I just thought like wow that's a whole new level of trust and um, for the Christians that are trying to celebrate Christmas mm-hmm. this year. That's so true. Wow. There's a huge long list of Christmas movies that we could probably name off, but what comes to mind when you think oh, of... Oh, I actually do have just one for that. What? I know. Well, I mean, I said I love the nativity story. I do love White Christmas, but the one, the end-all be-all, is It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I cry every single time I watch it. I watch it every single Christmas. Yeah. Season, not right. day. Right, right. I've already watched White Christmas. It's a dang good one, too. Yes. Have um, you watched It's a Wonderful Life in color? I believe I did 
in years a year you know okay one year but it's not right i saw i saw a clip of it <laughs> sorry at, i'm so traditional the, the tree lighting that i mentioned early on they showed a clip at the very end you know where it's all coming together and clarence gets his wings which we think think is so funny because that is our dad's name is yes. clarence but it was in color and it startled me i was like i've never watched the whole thing in color this doesn't feel right it doesn't. at all at all that movie, though, I mean, it's not just my favorite Christmas movie. It's my favorite movie. Mm-hmm. And I just think um, it speaks to me throughout the year. Like, mm-hmm. something will happen where something breaks in the house. And I'm, my first instinct is frustration. And then I think of George Bailey with the knob of the banister that comes off in his hand and how he's like kissing it by the end he's kissing it yeah (laughs) for sure yes um yeah that movie's just so we got to watch the movie one time at our downtown franklin theater and the lead actress mary her daughter was in the car well you know was there and did a little q a afterwards that was extremely special she was so beautiful donna reed yes so pretty um i mean i would echo those but if i want a good laugh like belly laugh i'm sorry there's nothing that beats christmas vacation nothing that beats it and i don't know if i've ever told this story on the podcast so i'm going to because (laughs) oh my gosh it needs to be told because somebody out there is going to do what you did apparently i had only seen christmas vacation on tv Mm -hmm. not the full thing um, I guess I just year after year usually just yeah caught it on TV. Yeah. So in a Bible study, I had proposed that we all watch Christmas Vacation because we <laughs> all needed a, a good laugh. <clears throat> and so I have everybody come over to watch it. And this was probably in a time where you rented it or sure. something. Yeah, yeah. And so I rented <laughs> the movie and watched it, and I was so mortified. Mm -hmm. So mortified two or three different times (laughs) as I'm sitting there with the Bible study group and, you know, there's some very um, sexual things that are in that movie. That they go to commercial on. That they must go to commercial on. And so I hadn't seen the... um, They probably wouldn't anymore. They'd probably let it all fly today on primetime. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. Yes. It was quite embarrassing. Somebody out there needs to know there's two versions. (laughs) If and, you're having your Bible study group, I would recommend just uh, the the milder version. Yeah. But they yeah. both are so funny. Did I send you this one? Favorite Christmas thing to do? You did. Okay. What was your answer? Um, get time with those I love, preferably one-on-one. That rarely happens, getting mm-hmm. to do one-on-one. But even if it's two or three on one, you know, with instead of like just Christmas party, where, yes, where um, like we mingle. we had a wonderful brunch yesterday at our church, yes. but I only had like a little bit of talk time really with two women, right? Yeah, because that's it's all you whoever can. you're sitting next to, yeah, um, yeah, and so it was. I had I had a wonderful time, right? I was so glad I I went, but I didn't. There was yeah. a lot of women I never even said hello to, yes, because it was just so it was many. a huge party, yeah. So I love when it's just you can. Have a grab a coffee or mm-hmm. something where it's just one or two people where you really mm-hmm. can catch up. Mm-hmm. That's that's good. How'd the, you answer? Well, that? this just shows what an introvert I am. I love sitting by the tree mm-hmm. lit up, so it really doesn't even have to be nighttime because the With light the, the uh, lights can be on and wonderful early in the morning too. Yes, um, and just read or mm-hmm. you know. Just be quiet or, you know, just stare I at the tree, do, for goodness sake. I do love when that's the only thing on. Yes. It's dark. Yes. No lights on other than the tree. Yes. It is magical. Yes. Love it so much. Yeah. We have one tree that's outside <clears throat> and it's um, kind of visible in the chair that I sit in. Like I can kind of through the blind see it. And when the wind blows, it looks like it's twinkling. Mm. And at first it kept like messing me up. And now I love it. Like it just the twinkling of the the light. I mean, metaphorically, obviously, that's just so glorious to think of the light coming into the darkness. Yes. But 
Christmas lights and just the warmth they bring, it really can't be achieved any other way. Well, so it's funny to me that As adults, we only do this at Christmas. Yeah. Right? Right. Because I think about in college. Yeah. Or, you know, I see this in dorm rooms. There's like that kind of cool lighting. Yes. Year round. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody will have just, you know, one strand of lights in this. Yeah. Across their bed. Yes. Or whatever. And it really is so cool. Why do we only do this at Christmas? I don't know. My nephew flicked on a remote of his lights in his dorm room and they were blue all around the city. Yeah. It was so cool. I could even see it from the road. I could tell which room was his. Like, how cool. cool. Yeah, I don't know why we only do this at Christmas. It's like the bohemian. I think of like, you know, you just think it's so like bohemian to have like, you know, some cool tapestries on the wall and some Christmas lights. And let's bring it back. (laughs) Let's make it chic. Boho year round. (laughs) I love it. Well, and I think I've mentioned this before, too. I'm just a huge fan of wrapping gifts. So Uh it doesn't it's not equal at all to what I mentioned is my very favorite at sitting by the tree. But gosh, I love a good bow. (laughs) You're really good at it. I love seamlessly wrapping gifts. And I even love the challenge of like when a box is a weird shape or I don't have a box. Okay. I, I can't, love, I love all of that. the look of wrapping paper and ribbon, mm-hmm. but I don't like a challenge. Yeah. Like give me just a good yeah. shoe box and yeah. I'm good to go. Yeah. But no, yeah, I don't like those octagons. It's oddly footballs. weird to me. <laughs> yeah. Hat boxes. I'm like, bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> Okay, what else would you say is just fun for our Christmas uh, greetings This at the end here? Well, I'm, I was just trying to even think of what am I loving right now. I've already mentioned, you know, I love the smells of cedars mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I'll tell you one thing I'm loving right now, and it's, I'm not trying to give a plug, but Larbeth and I are both sitting here in the coziest sweatshirt I may have ever owned. That's true. It's very true. And the pretty, prettiest color for all people. It is our peace be with Mm y'all sweatshirts. And I'm not saying that to plug or anything, (laughs) but it is so cozy. I love the color. It's not even meant to be Christmas. See, no, but but yet it is the word peace you often see at Christmas time. So it kind of works. Yeah. And it's a, shade of green it's not really a christmas green oh it's no. like a teal but yeah. it yep yeah, it works green. yeah so i'm loving this i've put it on two days in a row yeah. now but um i've been wearing <laughs> we're it gonna be twinning in this all season long um okay this is a little cheesy but <laughs> this morning i saw a friend of mine from church had put this post up about um, that she was watching this YouTube channel that was so peaceful. And so I'm like, I want to say this. You're intrigued. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't really get into the fireplace um, mm-hmm. thing like some people do. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, I put it on. It's Tim Janis, J-A-N-I-S. And it's a train ride through the Swiss Alps. Ooh. So it plays like peaceful music and it's showing different scenes. Like sometimes you're kind of like on the train, seeing where the train is going. Okay. Sometimes it's more like just showing like, you know, birds in the snow or different things like that. But it really is so peaceful to have on like just for background, if that makes sense. Like if I'm in and out of the room, it's just a really nice peaceful music Mm -hmm. and you know, when I'm sitting there, it's very cozy. That would especially be nice if you're in a setting where you don't have a lot of windows. Yes, that's so true. So, yeah, yeah, that sounds nice. So anyway, I'm really enjoying that right now. And I think one of the things that I always enjoy in the season of Christmas is just the nostalgia of things that are year to year the same. Yes. You know, Traditions. just tradition. Yes. yes. And I have a Christmas card Um, that I got years ago that I framed and I put out every Christmas because I always wanted to read it. It's just a sweet little poem. And I ended up, one year I put it in the bathroom that my massage clients use. And because it's a poem, I didn't really think anybody probably read it. Right. 
But then I started finding where people, I put it somewhere else another year and people were like, where's the poem? I wanted to read the poem again. Wow. And so then I was like, oh, people do read it. Wow. And look forward to it. And there again, it's I a think good it's poem. partially the nostalgia, but it's partially because it's so stinking good. Yeah. But anyway, um, I was looking through a book that I have. We actually sent these out years ago to some of yep, our listeners. We did. But it's. Um, ideals Christmas and mm-hmm. they do different um, holiday books and they're always sweet and filled with just stories and recipes and all yeah. kinds of things and so I was looking through that this year and there's a, a one page write-up that was written by the editors of McCall's oh cool and it's called Christmas Christmas thoughts for all the year and right in the middle of it, it has almost the exact really? poem huh. that I have framed in the bathroom. Cool. So I thought I would read this yes, to make, our listeners. We can make that sort of our benediction. Yes. Love it. What's it called? Christmas Thoughts for All the Year. Christmas is celebration, and celebration is instinct in the heart. With gift and feast with scarlet ribbon and fresh green bow, with merriment and the sound of music, we commend the day. Christmas is a celebration, but the traditions that cluster sweetly around the day have significance only if they translate the heart's intention. The yearning of the human spirit to compass and express faith and hope and love. Without this intention, the gift is bare. The celebration is a touch of tinsel, and the time without meaning. As these attributes, exemplifying the divine spark in mankind, informed the first Christmas and have survived the onslaughts of relentless time, so do they shine untarnished in the present year of our Lord. Faith and hope and love, which cannot be bought or sold or bartered, but only given away, are the wellsprings of Christmas celebration. These are the gifts without price, the ornaments incapable of imitation, discovered only within oneself and therefore unique. They are not always easy to come by, but they are in unlimited supply ever in the province of all. This Christmas, mend a quarrel, seek out a forgotten friend, dismiss suspicion and replace it with trust. Write a love letter, share some treasure, give a soft answer, encourage youth, manifest your loyalty in word and deed, keep a promise, find the time, forego a grudge, forgive an enemy, listen, apologize if you are wrong, try to understand, flout envy, examine your demands on others. Think first of someone else. Appreciate. Be kind. Be gentle. Laugh a little. Laugh a little more. Deserve confidence. Take up arms against malice. Decry complacency. Express your gratitude. Go to church. Welcome a stranger. Gladden the heart of a child. Take pleasure in the beauty and wonder of the earth. Speak your love. Speak it again. Speak it still once again. These are but inklings of a vast category, a mere scratching of the surface. They are simple things. You have heard them all before, but their influence has never been measured. Christmas is celebration, and there is no celebration that compares with the realization of its true meaning with the sudden stirring of the heart that has extended itself toward the core of life. Then, only then, is it possible to grasp the significance of that first Christmas, to savor in the inward ear the wild, sweet music of the angel choir, to envision the star-struck sky and glimpse behind the eyelids the ray of light that fell a, a... Athwart a darkened path and changed the world. Wow. So good. 
Thank you, sis. That's for you, listener. That's just for you. You are so loved. And we hope your Christmas is so full of hearing the songs that are sung over you. Mm -hmm. So good. Well, as we mentioned, we'll be on our little winter break that we usually take uh, for the next several weeks. But the best way to know when a new episode drops next year is to make sure that you are subscribed to this podcast wherever you listen. So... And as you gather with your friends and talk about the year, tell them about the podcast that you so enjoy. Yes. So sweet. And what we'll do is we'll put on Instagram or Facebook or both really when we do have a new episode coming next year, as well as we'll be sending out an email. So if you're not connected with us in those ways, go ahead and find us at steelmagnoliaspodcast.com. And we'll put the links in the show notes as well. Well, peace be with you, our wonderful producer editor. Thank you. And also, Merry Christmas, y'all. 